Three Palestinians have been shot dead in what Israel has said were thwarted knife attacks. But a Palestinian witness of one incident said Jewish settler violence was to blame. Our Middle East correspondent Shireen Tadros is in Ramallah in the West Bank. Yes, I mean, these were three separate attacks that took place. One of those was in occupied East Jerusalem. Reportedly, a 16-year-old Palestinian went towards a checkpoint where there were officers standing with a knife in his hand uh, and tried to stab those officers. He was then killed. Uh, two other incidents took place today, in the, also in the occupied West Bank city of Hebron. One of them, a female Palestinian that allegedly tried to stab a female border police uh, hitting her slightly or slightly cutting her I should say on the arm uh, and the female Palestinian was shot dead and then that, the last incident also uh, in Hebron that one a little bit more controversial because uh, the Palestinians are saying that a Jewish settler uh, took out his gun and shot dead a Palestinian living in Hebron uh, the Israeli side of the story that the Palestinian was in fact trying again uh, to stab the settler so as always here different versions of the same story and across the occupied West Bank we're still seeing these protests here uh, near Ramallah we're seeing just the beginnings really of a protest in the last half hour or so we're seeing Palestinian young Palestinians you can see there with slingshots throwing rocks pebbles marbles bits of concrete everything they can really at Israeli security forces that I would say are no more than 50 meters or so away and we've just heard and you could probably hear as I was speaking a round of rubber bullets that are being fired in their direction. So far, no injuries. We're still waiting uh, to see what happens here because we do know that hundreds of young Palestinians are in fact going to be on their way. This is has become really a weekly protest point for Palestinians and part of the wave of violence that we've been seeing take place across the Palestinian territories uh, in the past two weeks. We've seen eight Israelis being killed uh, in various stabbing attacks and we've also seen around 40 Palestinians being killed. Half of those uh, were shot dead by Israeli forces. The other half were killed in clashes like this one. So I should say half of those being uh, killed after stabbing attacks and the the other half being killed at uh, protests like this one and that's why people are saying that in fact Israel is using excessive force uh, they are dealing with what is rocks and stones being thrown at them with rubber coated steel bullets with tear gas and so on and this is really part of the problem uh, here across the occupied West Bank. There's also been incredible security measures that have been taking uh, place here. They're unprecedented. Some people are talking about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, saying and just in the last few days uh, that more Israeli troops will be uh, across the occupied Palestinian territories, will be placed there for security reasons. Parts of occupied East Jerusalem have been closed down really for the first time in recent memory uh, and there's also criticism that this kind of um, measures are in fact provoking the Palestinians and just leading to more violence. Well, Palestinian activists are also gathering at a protest in London this lunchtime. Sky City News correspondent Alex Rossi is there. So Alex, what are the plans then for today? Well, several hundred people have gathered here in Kensington. You can see them behind me, perhaps even a thousand people. Why have they gathered here? Well, if we just move the camera around, you can see over there behind those gates, behind the police line, is the Israeli embassy. We should stress, of course, this demonstration has been very peaceful. With me now is uh, vice chair of the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, Kamel Hawash. Why are we seeing at the moment, in your opinion, this uptick of violence? Why now? Why now? Well, first of all, there's the ongoing occupation. But secondly, Prime Minister Netanyahu... Well, that's been going on for, yeah, for decades. Pri Prime Minister Netanyahu decided to go on an adventure. He decided he was going to take Al-Aqsa Mosque from Muslims, divide it, to allow Jews to pray there, which is something that goes against all the previous agreements. It is a Muslim holy site. I respect the fact that Jews have some connection to it. But what they want to do is to take it, demolish it, and build a third temple, and the Palestinians will not stand for that. So that is what raised the tensions more re most recently. But the Israeli government says that its security response is proportionate 
to violence which is being perpetrated by political and religious extremists. Well, I think if, if in the streets of the UK you saw someone uh, attack another person and the only response is you kill him first, people would be appalled here. So the, the, the response has been extrajudicial executions of But lots of, of people, people would say it's quite clear that the intent of the Palestinians carrying those knives is to kill Israelis. But the point I'm making is, if every time this happens anywhere, the first thing you do is kill them, then we, we, the, the society will disintegrate into the law of the jungle. Where they've been able to capture them, they've still killed them. And that's what we object to. And Netanyahu has to look himself in the mirror and realize it is his policies which has called, have caused the deaths of both Jews and Palestinians. But Israeli society itself is also responsible for electing him, because Israeli society has moved to extremism. They have moved to appoint governments of settlers, illegal settlers, that will undertake policies that will make peace a, a, a distant uh, uh, hope for us all. And we should stress, though, that this demonstration is not just uh, at the Israelis, it's also the British government as well. Indeed. So the British government, uh, a few months ago, uh, voted to adopt a, a, a report by the United Nations Human Rights Council that said that Israel committed war crimes in Gaza. And then the Prime Minister invites Netanyahu to come to the UK, rolls as the red carpet. That is unacceptable. If you invite people who are suspected war criminals to come here, then you are not siding with legality. And that's something the British government should stop doing. Professor Kamal Hawash, thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's uh, dividing opinion here, really, whether what we are witnessing in and around Jerusalem is a third intifada. But many people say that the lack of a peace process, the 1993 Oslo Accords, of course, in tatters, would suggest that this violence is going to continue for some time. Alex, thank you. A terminally ill...